Welcome back to the YouTube channel, guys. This is Poetry in Campus, and we're gonna be jumping into talking about pushing the boundaries of your style. There are three things that I find very imperative to this topic. The first being how to not be the expectation. Now, this is very difficult when social media is telling us to hustle hard and to do everything we can do to be the best, be on top, etc., etc. Now, again, social media has it absolutely incorrect. Mind you, their state of mind that they're trying to push on you is very effective. It has us believing that we have to be, we have to see the greatest person and be better instead of see the greatest person as inspiration and then be ourselves in the same subject. But you see, being yourself doesn't sell. So they're not going to tell you that. Instead, they're going to say, be the best. Because if you're working hard at being the best, you're likely buying the best products, the highest quality stuff, spending your money, spending your money, spending your money, and spending your time trying to either perfect another creator's creation or to be the most recognized by everyone on social media. And both those goals are achievable, but they're not realistic nor are they sustainable. And I'm not talking about sustainable being, can you maintain this for two to three years? Of course you can. You can achieve somebody else's art. You can be recognized on social media and go viral and be the, the best thing since sliced bread. But the problem with this is it's not sustainable in the mind, in the spirit, or in the heart and later on in the body because we know how this all works it all works together the circle of life of blah 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 so instead of being the expectation it's very important to see the topic such as painting or creating music or woodworking and doing something of our own style doing something of our by our own means and what that means is Let's go into a typical thing like acrylic painting. If you're an acrylic artist and you paint things like portraits, someone who paints large paintings of portraits might have more views and more likes and things like that. Now, don't forget that likes and followers and comments do not pay for your artwork. Not the level of cost that you probably spent on that artwork will your likes, comments, and followers measure up to. They will get you a coffee and they will get you a tea, but they will not be able to, you know, compensate for not only the materials used, but the labor used and, you know, labor as in physical and mental creativity in order to complete this painting. So remember that in order to push the boundaries of your style, if you were uh, an acrylic artist and you paint portraits. Now you might not be doing these huge grandiose things, but maybe you find that, well, you've been doing portraits on 18 by 20s and it's been going okay, but there's something you feel like there's something else you could add to your work. There's something else that you can do that maybe no one else has done. And it seems absolutely insane. And you might be thinking, well, why should, why would I do this why would anyone actually like this? If I create this, will people make fun of me? The answer is yes, by the way. No matter what you do, people will make fun of you. So just let them make fun of you. But in the meantime, you're likely going to attract people like yourself who are like, wow, I can't believe you did that to your canvas. Or maybe you didn't work on canvas. Maybe you worked on fabric or upholstery from old chairs um, and you created these portraits and the textures are there and there's some pieces of gold here and there, some pieces of quartz, I don't know, whatever your thing is. And that makes people think like, this is the best person there is on social media doing acrylic portrait art. But then there's this person who's created this thing and it's not like the best person at all but it's very different and it's very unique and it, it has our interest. We're captivated by the appearance of this artwork. Wow. And this is a different mindset, right? You're not likely to remember any of the people who draw a realistic portrait. If we're talking about 10 people 
everybody draws a realistic portrait except one person. They instead capture the essence like I do in my, my work usually, or they use different palettes or they use a different technique. Instead of painting a realistic thing, they're like scrubbing and scratching their surface instead. And the person who's going to get the most attention out of those 10 people is the one person who did something different. The person who did not meet expectations. Instead, they took the topic that they were given, they took the prompt and they created something that went beyond expectation. Our goal as humans is not to be the best. Our goal is to just be. So why not just take whatever media and whatever things you're thinking of and just go with it. And this leads into the second thing, being random. I 100% mean this, please be random. When I say you're that portrait artist out of the 10 and instead of using a paintbrush with oils and doing the right layers and using the right chemistry and working with the right duration, instead you use oils, but in a way that makes it look so strange and cracked up, but we can still see a face in there, but now we see pain or we see change or we see heartbreak. And instead of being realistic, as in exactly what you see, you might be realistic in exactly what the person feels or what their story is or what they're talking about. So instead of um, just painting with plain oils and plain um, or and, and traditional materials. Maybe the portrait is of a person who was a gardener. And so you're going to use different soils, different clays. Um, maybe you're going to add in a bird feather or a, a certain leaves or things like that. Something that's just different. And now it makes people wonder, hmm, that's different. And like, why? Why did you do that? We said a realistic portrait. Nine people made a realistic portrait. Then there's yours. Now you may not have done exactly what you were asked to do, but I can guarantee you the person who provided that prompt, you know, realistic portrait, is going to remember not the nine, but the one who did something that seems out of this world because they did something that wasn't expected. They went beyond the expectation and that's much more beautiful and it, and it really pushes the boundaries of your style. Now you're like, hmm, maybe I like to mix oils and clay and dirt. And I'm not talking about clay in a box. I'm talking about natural sand that you can form with water, like beautiful stuff, like the red stuff, the yellow. Um, there's even like black sands, white sands. You can use so many different things. And maybe you're like, wow, I really like painting with sand and now you've pushed the boundary of your style at first you thought i'm a realistic oil portrait painter now you're a portrait painter with sand a sand artist and that's amazing now you've pushed the boundaries of your style you went beyond the expectation and you've become something more and this leads into the third thing which is remembering to explore this I spoke about in my last video, experimenting versus exploring, but exploring is really the core of it all. It's the thing that helps us to discover new stuff, the thing that helps us to understand the world and how it works around us and, and what can come from ourselves. The thing that helps with exploring is journaling. And I'm not talking about a diary. You don't even have to keep a, a legit journal with lines in it. You can just have something where you can record what you've done, how long it took, what kinds of medium you mixed together, and your, um, and your feedback to yourself about it. Did it work out how you thought or not so much? Did you like the process or not so much? Do you feel like there's something new that can be added? All these kinds of things are, are very important when it comes to exploring and and being random. Being random is a form of exploration as well. I'm going to cut this material and just add that to my painting and see what kind of texture that creates. It's exploring and it's being random because you never thought you'd use that material. And then all of a sudden, now you've created something that you really, really like or you're like, what was that? 
you, you write it down. Now you know you'd rather not use that material, but you want to use some material because you like the, the use of it in your, in your creation. And that's really how it goes. For all styles, for all crafts, it's important to push the boundaries, to go beyond the expectations and to be your unique self. Be random, be explorative, write it all down, keep track of it all. There's nothing wrong with all of that. It's totally fine and it's totally you. <laughs> Just be, you know? Just be. Anyhow, thanks again for tuning into this video, guys, pushing boundaries of your style. I hope that really helps you. If you can, please like and subscribe this video. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and see my Patreon. Become part of that. There's some really great exclusive content over there and some wonderful groups to become part of. Thanks again, guys. You know who it is. Adios.